Okay, so let's talk about kidney. So structure, we've covered the structure, kidney bean. We'll go into function. It's probably called king because it does so many different things. It regulates the composition of your blood, regulates the osmolarity, regulates the pH in, in various ways, the electrolyte balance. Um, it moves certain classes of toxins uh, and also plays a major endocrine role, uh, signaling that regulates blood pressure, uh, that regulates uh, balance of uh, phosphates and calcium, and a whole host of other things. So uh, really important, and it's interconnected in a very uh, intricate way with the liver, uh, with the heart, uh, the vasculature, and so it's got a very uh, uh, tightly interconnected homeostatic uh, role as well. So uh, this is what its uh, gross structure looks like. It's got a uh, uh, renal artery coming in, renal vein going out, and it's got a uh, what's called a cortex, which is this uh, rim of tissue uh, where a lot of the uh, filtration takes place. And then it's got an uh, inner part called the medulla, which uh, is where the urine is collected, formed and collected, uh, concentrated and uh, sent out through the ureter, which goes down to the uh, so uh, recap of some of the key functions, electrolyte balance in water, excretion, both metabolic and foreign, blood pressure, and some of this endocrine uh, aspect, which we'll get to in a minute. So let's delve into each of these in, in some uh, depth. Uh, so the first, regulation of water and electrolytes. This is pretty crucial. Uh, if things go awry even a little bit in terms of osmolarity, it can be fatal. If your uh, concentration of dissolved uh, uh, ions, the osmolarity in your blood is a little bit off, that will cause big shifts into or out of the cells of your body. If that happens in your neurons, it can cause seizure. If it happens in your heart, it can cause cardiac arrest, and it can cause global dysfunction in uh, your kidney. And so it's extremely important. It has to sense and respond to shifts in uh, ion balance. Not only the total number of those, but the identity of each of them, that's very important. Uh, as you remember from your nervous system uh, lectures, the precise concentration of each of these and the relative ratios is extremely important, for example, in setting the resting potential of neurons. It doesn't do everything. Uh, some uh, metal ions are regulated more by the GI system, uh, but it plays a pretty dominant role in terms of uh, control. And the uh, you know, it's good to now look at the sort of big picture of where, what, what sort of volume are we talking about? Uh, how many ions? This will uh, be important in making basic calculations about how uh, balance is maintained. Think about that. Uh, total body water, as you probably know, is majority of your body weight, 50 to 80 percent. So 70 kilogram person, typically about 42 liters of water. Now, uh, some of it's in the blood, but that's actually a relatively small proportion. A lot of it is sloshing around in between the outside of the cells and the uh, blood vessels. That's called interstitial fluid. And then some of it is actually inside the cells. Actually, a great deal of it is inside the cells. And then a lot of it is sort of uh, in the process of moving, transcellular. Uh, it's in various stages of transport or, or translation. And then even your very dense tissues, your bone and your collagen, they have a strong uh, component of water as well, which actually is important, contributes to their incompressibility. And there's exchange among all these different compartments. You get major clinical problems if, for example, too much accumulates in the interstitial fluid. You get edema, swelling, um, and you see that in heart failure, for example. And you think about how each of these arrows uh, can be regulated or, or become dysfunctional in different uh, tissues and states. If someone comes in with, you know, swelling in the feet, you have to think about which arrows uh, might be responsible for that. Okay, now it's not just a a static picture within the body, of course, there's ins and outs, I's and O's. And uh, there's a lot coming in, a lot going out. Typically, you have about two and a half liters coming in and out at any given day. 
uh, a lot of fluid, some in the food, some uh, water is generated metabolically. H2O is a byproduct of a reaction. Those are, those are your gains per day. Then you lose a fair bit of water. Um, some what we call insensible losses, lost in the vapor of your breath uh, uh, through the skin. And a fair bit of, uh, that's, that's pretty dominant. Then there's a fair bit of sweat, which at baseline is low, although it can be very high, of course, in certain conditions. Uh, some through feces and then uh, urine. So this is the main dial that the body has to control uh, the balance. Everything else is a response to environmental or metabolic conditions and the dial your body uh, adjusts uh, on the uh, output end. Of course, it can control how much you drink on the input end as well. Those are both those are the two things I would say the, uh, the brain and the kidney can work together most to control in the most flexible fashion. Uh, so, so yeah, I think that's a, a fair summary. The others, of course, are regulatable but are uh, sort of less optional. Okay, so how is this done? Well, you've got, uh, you know, just think about the formation of, of urine. So you've got, uh, you've got your blood, it's got stuff in it. And someone's got a big water load, let's say, they drink a whole bunch of water, they overshoot. If nothing's done, their blood's going to be too dilute. What's that going to do? Well, it's going to force water into cells, it's going to cause them to swell, cause people to die. Okay, that's not good. So what does the kidney have to do? It has to detect this and it's got to get some of that water out. But your blood is packed with extremely valuable stuff. It's packed with cells. It's packed with protein, okay, uh, the stuff that was metabolically costly to make and generate, uh, you know, uh, minerals that might be scarce and rare, um, amino acids that the body can't make and so are, are crucial to, to retain. So there has to be a filtration step where the good stuff is kept, the bad stuff is lost. And that's actually a beautifully uh, and there's a progression along the kidney uh, its filtration system, and you'll see what these elements are. There's the proximal tubule, the loop of Henle, the distal tubule, and the collecting tubule. Stuck. And what happens is if you actually plot the concentration or the relative concentration of what's in the excretory pathway in the tubular fluid versus what's in your plasma, i.e. in your blood, the very different uh, properties, dynamics of concentration uh, as you go through the kidney for different uh, elements. The first thing to notice is this, protein, glucose, and amino acids, these are kept, okay? Their concentration plummets to zero in the tubular fluid, what's going to become the urine, uh, uh, very, very early in the process of passing through the kidney. Extremely important, very valuable, and to retain. Except in disease states. If the kidney's not working well, you can see protein loss in the kidney, foamy urine. That's uh, many kidney diseases cause that. Of course, diabetes, glucose gets too high and you have sugar in the urine. What about all these other things? Well, first thing uh, to realize is it's pretty complicated. There's a, if you look at just sodium and potassium and, and chloride, you can see there's uh, some specific things happening at different stages along the progression through the kidney. And a lot can be tuned uh, depending on how much the body needs of these different ions and water. Uh, these can vary uh, widely. Get into some of the complexity on, on what's happening with all these other. There are uh, some things that are uh, not actively retained but are actively uh, treated. Or, uh, and those include uh, urea and creatinine. These are nitrogenous uh, waste products. That's the kidney's job to uh, for those that tend to achieve higher concentrations as you go through the kidney than what you see in the blood. So that's kind of the outcome. Uh, how is that actually done? 